actually Saturday instead of Sunday when I usually do this thing, but I have to go to Vegas tonight. So I decided might as well do it now in case I'm dead. Um, when you live three to three and a half hours from LAX, and it can even be more if traffic goes crazy, it all depends on traffic, that trip is a pain. When it's three and a half to four hours to Las Vegas on a road that is pretty much clear all the way there and back, especially at the time of night I usually drive, Vegas becomes worth the extra miles because even if the time is even a whole hour longer, it doesn't feel like it because you're not parked on the freeway. So, <laughs> I'm telling you the guys, the 405, the jokes, they are no lie. So, um, it's really funny. People joke about, or they talk about, or they complain about the, the rush hour in Atlanta. And I'm sure it's horrible somewhere. But every time I've driven rush hour in Atlanta, even when it's come to stop and go, it isn't even a blink to the 405 to the 15 on a Sunday or a Friday night uh, because everybody's going to Vegas, right? <laughs> so I, I, yeah, it's, I, no. So, but I, I'm so excited about this TV art. I'm like, hey. okay, so I started pulling books out. I'll grab these. Uh, I started pulling books out because I was planning on TBR. First one I was going to do is this one because I went to get it last month. I, I was like, I have wanted to read that book since I talked to Chris Fabry. And he, I said, what, of any of your books, if you were going to tell someone they can only read one, which one? He said, I would like this one best. And I don't know if he said it for everyone, but he definitely thought I would like this one best. And so I was like, okay, June book. I'm getting that. And then I was like, wait a minute. This is May. Next month is June. So I set it back on the shelf. And I guess it's probably a good thing that I did because there are... Two books for sure that I didn't read this month and one that I sort of kind of decided not to and then I realized it was a mistake. We'll talk about that later. But, well, in another video. But I just like, I'm, 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 I'm saving that for June. So I this one has been planned since last month and it's going to stay. But then I also have my Chantal Reads All Day Book Challenge and my Trollope to read. And I have, I'm supposed to do the buzzword of thought. And this month is like a repeated word. And I have on my list to read Wolf by Wolf. And I thought I have bought it. I cannot find it. So I've got to go look. But before I do that, I'm going to make sure that none of these others fit that prompt where you have to have the word twice. Because I decided I've got this stack of books. It's a small stack. But I got this stack of books and I realized I'm pretty excited about all of them. And I was like, I'm doing a book haul TBR. So yes, these over here are not part of that, but it never is. These are, are, are preset before the foundations of the year. <laughs> and so this is okay that these aren't new book haul books. But I have new book haul books, and I'm going to do it because I just, I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I have seven books here. Uh, technically, I have eight, but we'll get to one in a minute. So, I was like, that's perfect. I'm doing it. So, first up is my Chantal Reads All Day Book Challenge. Now, read your bookshop challenge. Um, apparently, I messed up in... May. I thought I had switched over and it says in my Hey Reader from her website, it says that I'm doing the Doyle track right now, but apparently I wasn't. So I was supposed to read a new to me author and I did. I read the uh, Maynard, somebody Maynard. Um, that goes with this, the, the Wooing of Recluse. And I thought that was the one I was supposed to read. Apparently, this is the one I was supposed to read because apparently I'm still on the Montgomery track. That was a new to me author, so I thought maybe, right? 
because this month I'm supposed to read poetry and I pulled this is the book I pulled out because I had wanted to you know make a decision it's gonna be an easy book to read okay I'm just saying it's gonna be a really easy book to read but there's there's there are just not very many words but I also will not be surprised if this is a DNF. In fact, I will be more surprised if this isn't a DNF than I would be if it was. Because that title, guys, makes me really uncomfortable. However, readers that I respect and trust have raved about it. So I'm giving it a chance. And we shall see. <laughs> I just... Ooh. <laughs> It, it's, it's very uncomfortable. The Lost Spells by Robert McFarlane. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, but I'm excited because it is beautiful. And as long as it doesn't get too woo-woo or just absolutely cross a line, I'm probably going to love it. So this is my um, last Montgomery. I think I switched to Doyle next, finally, even though I had it wrong for the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge. Then I have supposedly Wolf by Wolf, unless I find something here, that I will either find or buy, or buy and then find two, and <laughs> because that's how Shatona works. Then I have my last of the Barsetshire Anthony Trollope, The Last Chronicle of Barset. I'm really hoping this book deals with some of the stuff from the last one because guys there were some things that I was like I kind of like what he did there but I still feel like I'm hanging so I'm not sure um but and don't get me wrong I, I think I gave it four stars I like it we'll talk about it later but friends of the Whitefish Bay Public Library thank me for buying the book okay uh, <laughs> but so yeah I'm I'm if this is a chunker I have it queued up to listen to on the way to and from Vegas tonight that's approximately eight hours in the car give or take you know six between six and eight hours in the car but it's on 1.4 speed which is the fastest I can listen to this particular narrator without it feeling fast um, he's a he's a slow reader and I like to feel immersive when I'm listening I don't like to read books on two times and three times and all the time speeds it's not my thing but I can I can go up to 1.4 and only in places does it feel fast uh, so I, that's it's still 12 hours so it's like 20 something I think or almost 20 something like that but this is my last of these, and then I do the Pallisters. And in the last book, I met Plantagenet Pallister, and I'm assuming it's going to be part of that. I don't, I don't know, but I'm, I'm thinking. Okay, so here's my book haul TBR. Yes! I don't know why I'm so excited about this, but I am. Because it's just, it's, I don't know, it's different. Um, the, the easiest one... Which technically could be my buzzwordathon if I really wanted to go that route. I don't, uh, but I I could if I if I get desperate I might even uh, because it counts. So the housekeeper and the professor. This is a book that I read last month. Um, I listened to it on audio and I loved it so much that I bought the paperback. And oh by the way, it has the and the. So technically there are two thes. So it counts if I need it to. <laughs> uh, and technically, if it were on this TBR, which I'm technically not doing because, I mean, it's technically here, but I won't be rereading it. it, it it's done. Woohoo! It's June 1st. My first book is done. No, um, this book, I'll be talking about it in my wrap up, but this book is uh, about a Japanese professor who was in an accident and now he only has 80 minutes of short-term memory before the uh, since the accident so anything before the accident he remembers well every 80 minutes it resets and he can't seem to keep a housekeeper until the scout comes in and it's a beautiful story this guy is kind of like he's a little bit like an uva type character but 
like the total opposite too, because you know, Uba gets really frustrated with these kids and he's like, you know, what's wrong with you people? And this guy, the minute he hears about a kid, he is all in on the kid. It's just so sweet. Absolutely loved it. And so, um, now, yeah, I, I went and bought the paperback. So technically that's not one of my books, but you know, whatever. And then I talked to Kylie Beavers on the podcast and I ordered her book after I talked. Kylie Beavers wrote this when she was 13. And she is, I think, 15 now. Oh, I didn't notice. She sent me a little box stickers and, um, and everything. But so what this is, it's, I mean, it says, Swift as a fox, sharp eyes, soft paws. Is peace attainable or are the wolves too savage? Will the differences be settled before battles turn to war and consume them all? Then... The opening is, it's, it's on a battlefield. And it's a journal entry. And then you, you jump into the story. Now the story, it, she, she equates it to similar to like the Green Ember series by S.D. Smith. Is it S.D. or S.D.? It's S.D. Smith. And she said, I, I loved the cover. It's got original cover art. Uh, her cousin did it, I believe, but I think it was her cousin. Was it her cousin? Her brother. Someone in the family did the art. Uh, but it's Rise of the Living Wood, which I don't think I've actually said the title yet. So Rise of the Living Wood. The Living Wood. I think she said she puts the emphasis on living. Rise of the Living the Living Wood. And when I commented on the cover, she said that most middle grade slash YA books in this fantasy type genre tend to have dark covers and themes and she wanted to emphasize light. So, um, yeah, it sounds really good. I read the, that prologue journal entry and I started reading, oh look, it's got you little foxes for the hee <laughs> hee. And I started reading, I like the writing. So I'm really, really excited about this book. And it's book one. I think she said there's going to be a trilogy. It's going to be a trilogy. So there's that one. First one on this month's TBR. Then I talked to, you can see this is a problem, right? Then I talked to, um, throw that away. Uh, Janine Roche and the road, we talked about the road before us. It's all about this trip on route 66. Now this is where things get really, really interesting. So where's June bag? All right. So here's the deal. In this book, I'm going to read the synopsis. That's what I'm going to do. It says, how far would you go to fix the mistakes you've made? For Jay Jessup, the answer is 2,448 miles. Once one of Chicago's significant financial advisors, Jade lost her credibility when her fiancé and co-worker stole millions of dollars from their clients in a Ponzi scheme. Now she's agreed to help one of them, an aging 1960s Hollywood starlet named... Bernice Benny Aldridge, Seek Financial Restoration. Jade sets off along Route 66 with Benny and her handsome adult foster son, Bridger, who is filming a documentary retracing the 1956 trip that started the love story between Benny and her recently deceased husband, Paul. Listening to Benny recount her story draws Jade into memories of her own darker association with Route 66 when she was kidnapped as a child by a man the media labeled a monster, but she remembers only as her dad. Okay, I'm going to stop there. All right, so Junebug. Junebug is part of this thing, right? So Junebug is, I believed everything my daddy told me until I walked into Walmart and saw my picture on a poster. For as long as she can remember, Junebug and her father have traveled the back roads of the country in their beat-up RV, spending many nights parked at Walmart. One day, as she walks past the greeter at the front of the store, her eyes are drawn to the pictures of missing children, where she is shocked to see herself. This discovery begins a quest for the truth about her father, the mother he rarely speaks of, and ultimately herself. But when her father's past catches up with them... Forces beyond his control draw them back to Dogwood, West Virginia, down a winding path that will change their lives forever. So, we have two kid kidnapped scenarios. 
um, with by fathers. And come on. I'm excited. It's going to be kind of weird. I'm definitely going to read them separated, probably first half of the month, second half of the month, so that I can do a wrap-up on one and be done with it, so I remember the second one. I'm hoping that's that's the plan. That's the plan. Um, okay, so there's that, and then I'm trying to do this by size-ish. Then I pre-ordered this one. I This was a an Instagram buy. I did not know about this woman, Callie McClay, until I saw something about this book. I don't think it was the cover. I think it might be the title and something about it that she had posted, and I saw it, and I started following her to find out more, and then I pre-ordered it, and it is here. And I'm like, this sounds so much fun. So... What if we met in a bookstore? It's book one of the Breezewood chapters. Okay. She's ready to turn a new page. He doesn't want the story to be over. So it's clearly a romance, but I don't care. I mean, bookstore. Uh, when Briar Verlise, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's, a, it's, it's hard to read. Uh, finds out her favorite bookstore in Homer, Alaska is on the verge of closing. She jumps at the opportunity to save it. But her high school crush and former classmates are back in town, making her plans a little more difficult. Okay, I like the fact that it's not just the dude. It's like everybody's back. That's kind of cool. When an array of riddles comes into her possession, an array of riddles, uh, they trigger a memory from a time she disappeared without a trace. While digging into the clues, Briar discovers the reason for her disappearance might stray into the realm of fiction and magic. Peter West, dreaming of becoming a successful escape room artist, is striving to build a career from crafting unique puzzles. When he gets the offer of a lifetime, he sets out to create an escape room worthy of his small town. But when riddles Peter never devised begin to surface before construction on the attraction even begins, so does a wild secret, one that demands the escape room he built be built, not he built. It's really hard to read on here. Either that or my eyes are blurry today. Um, escape room be built as soon as possible. Unexpectedly reunited with the girl who's held his heart since high school, Peter's reality is shattered when the bookstore becomes a literal place of escape. Can they unravel the mysteries before life as they know it comes to an end? And I love it. It feels like it's got some magical realism and I feel like it's not going to be frankly witchy. I feel like this is just like an otherworldly kind of thing, which I, I'm, I'm totally down for. So I'm excited. <clears throat> this this could be the first one I, t I go for. Maybe. I don't know. All right. Next up, the Awakening of Miss Prim by Natalia San Martin. I can't read that. And of course they do it that way. Let's try it in here. Yeah. Natalia San Martin Fenoroya? Fenoyura. 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 Yura. Yura. Fenoyura. Natalia San Martin Fenalura. Okay, The Awakening of Miss Prim. Now, I started, I think it was like the first chapter, maybe two, in uh, just reading it on the, you know, sample from Amazon. And I was intrigued. And one person that I really tend to agree with on books loved it. And I think my number one daughter had a few problems with it, but didn't hate it if I recall correctly. So we shall see. We shall see. Um, an exquisitely delicate, and it might be the reverse. It might be the reverse. Anyway, an exquisitely delicate, unusual, and inspiring story that will leave your heart undone and open to the beauty of the little things in life. And that's Spanish L. Maybe L Magazine, but in Spanish? I don't know. Anyway, Prudencia Prim is a young woman of intelligence, and achievement with a deep knowledge of literature and several letters after her name. But when she accepts the post of private librarian in the village of San Irino, 
I, I really am trying. I think it's me. I don't think it's the books. I, although it is a busy background again, so who knows? San Marino de Anois. Anois? 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 I don't know. Anois? I don't know. We're just going to go with that. Uh, we're going to go with San Marino and, and leave it there. Um, <laughs> she is unprepared for what she encounters there. Her employer is dashing yet contrarian and always ready with a critique of her cherished Jane Austen and Louisa May Alcott. The neighbors, too, are capable of charm and eccentricity in equal measure, determined as they are to preserve their singular little community from the modern world outside. Prudencia Hope for Friendship in San Ireno. Hey, hey, see, they, they, they dropped the other stuff, too. All right. But she didn't suspect that she might find love. Oh, dear. Oh, well. I was hoping for more of a curmudgeon that, you know, just kind of a, um, where'd it go? professor and the housekeeper thing but oh well um nor that the course of her new life would run quite so rocky would offer challenge and heartache as well as joy discovery and fireside debate okay that you got me with fireside debate so who cares about the romance yay all the romance woohoo yes rah rah <laughs> then and these could end up being listened to on audio because they're mysteries. But I keep hearing people raving about the maid. I hope I'm, I love her name. Need a prose. I mean, it just, my heart. Anyway, I keep hearing really good things about this book. And so I decided I'm going to grab it and, and see. And then I went ahead and got the second one in case I really do like it. If I don't, I can donate it and life is good. I only paid a couple bucks for each one. So, a dead body is one mess she can't clean up on her own. Molly Gray is not like everyone else. Oh, goody. Another not like every other girl. That's a favorite trope of mine. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Molly Gray is not like everyone else. She struggles with social skills and misreads the intentions of others. Okay, I can handle this. This is the not like others that I like. Her grand used to interpret the world for her, codifying it into simple rules that Molly could live by. Since grand died a few months ago, 25-year-old Molly has been navigating life's complexities all by herself. No matter, she throws herself with gusto into her work as a hotel maid. Her unique character, along with her obsessive love of cleaning and proper etiquette, makes her an ideal fit for the job. She delights in donning her crisp uniform each morning, stocking her cart with miniature soaps and bottles, and returning guest rooms at the Regency Grand to a state of perfection. But her orderly life is upended the day she enters the suite of the infamous and wealthy Charles Black, only to find it in a state of disarray and Mr. Black himself dead in his bed. We're going to stop there. So Molly's a maid. A maid with, with social skill issues and, and a propensity for cleanliness and finds a body. That's all I need to know. I'm going to love it. As long as it doesn't have smut or language, we're going to be good. And then the mystery guest... And it, they call them a maid novel, so whatever. A new mess, a new mystery. It's up to Molly the maid to uncover the truth, no matter how dirty. <laughs> I love it. That was good. That was good. Okay. Molly Gray, again. Okay. But as her life reaches a pinnacle state of perfection, her world is turned upside down when J.D. Grinthorpe, the world-renowned mystery writer, uh, sorry, mystery author, drops dead, very dead, on the hotel's tea room floor. As Molly's old foe, Detective Stark, <laughs> investigates the author's unexpected demise, it becomes clear that this death was murder most foul. We're just going to stop there. Yeah. So, this one came from Baton Rouge. Nice. All right, so, then we have one more mystery. It's going to be a mysterious month. Someone mentioned this as, it says classic British crime. Um, I think it was Shalise found this somewhere. The Winteringham Mystery. I think Shalise found this, and this might be the one that she said, was this the, no, that was the Red Thumb. She might have said that this one was um, put up there as kind of like, 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was part of, oh, the founder of the prestigious and still flourishing Detection Club for British Crime Writers. Um, he was one of the most innovative authors of the genre's golden age. Okay, so yes, this is the one. I, 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 can, I can thank Shalise for this one. So, The Wintering Home Mystery by Anthony Berkeley. And it says, Cecily Disappears. Agatha Christie said, Detection and crime at its wittiest. All Berkeley stories are amusing, intriguing, and he is a master of the final twist. Mm. Okay. Stephen Munro, a demobbed army officer, takes a job as a footman to make ends meet. Employed at Wittringham Hall, the decaying country residence of Lady Susan Carey, his first task entails welcoming her eccentric guest to a weekend house party, where her bombastic nephew decides that an after-dinner seance would be the most entertaining, sorry, would be more entertaining than bridge. The lights go out and Cecily disappears. With Lady Susan reluctant to call the police about this childish prank, Stephen and the plucky Pauline Mainwaring take it upon themselves to investigate. But then a suspicious death turns the game into an altogether more serious affair. Da, da, da. So, not a big fan of books with seances, but I kind of like the idea that someone disappears in one. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So I'm, guys, I, this is going to be like one of the most fun TBRs I've had maybe ever, just because it's like, I, these are all books I've just heard of, got really excited about, and, well, not just heard of, but just heard enough of, because I mean, this one I've heard of for a while, but got excited enough about that I went and bought, and now I'm going to read, like, right away. I'm going to go ahead and put this one up here, because it's always possible. None of these other books have repeated words except for, I feel like it's kind of a cheat to use the... But if I get desperate for Buzzword of I will swap it out for this one. So, this, oops, I lied. I got a couple more. Hang on, hang on. We, we, we gotta do this thing. Okay, we're gonna put no, Mr. Trollope way up here. There you go. All right, Mr. Trollope. And what about Mr. Spells? We're gonna spell you. All right, so this is my June. Come on. My June TBR. <laughs> so excited. I'm so excited. This is so cool. Huh. I, I don't know why I hadn't thought of this before. I have a feeling this will be a couple times a year thing from now on. Because this is really fun. I, I have not been... Have I ever been this excited about... I don't think so. This It's just so different. <laughs> okay. I'm fine. I'm fine. Everything is just dandy. And this is what I'll be reading in June. <laughs> so, do you know what you're reading? Do you know which one of these I should read first? I'm just saying. I mean, this one is going to get read really fast because it'll either get read really fast because there's not many words or it'll get read really fast because it'll get DNF'd. This one, I'll be like panicking on the last day of the month most likely. And then the rest are just going to be some, you know, whatever. But which one? Which, 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 which one first? Oh, I should probably do either June Bug or The Road Before Us, huh? Yeah, I should do one of those first. So which one? June Bug or The Road Before Us? Which one do I start with? All right. I will chat with you guys about what I read in June and everything. On Thursday, I'm going to be recording that tonight. You get to watch me, yay, wrap journals while I talk. That's that's what we're doing. <laughs> um, and so that, that, that'll be ready to go up while I'm gone. And then I'm, I'm hoping to do some videos with Kathy. So yay, I'm really excited. Looking forward to this, this retreat. I'm just saying. Um, those who pray, I want to thank you for praying for Kevin. He has been sleeping the last three nights without drugs, I think. Two nights, three nights, no drugs. Fingers crossed, prayers, raising, all the things. God is good, and I hope he sleeps while I'm gone. 
also, again, traveling, and I have a book that needs to get done really fast. I'm having fun. Guys, I am writing agency files uh, with a character that we don't really know from agency files. Um, he, he's been out of the agency before we even start, so it's not really someone that we spend a lot of time with. But it's Christmas, it's a castle, and someone is after her, so she breaks in, and... There's no one there, so she's like holing up in this castle. She feels safe until this guy comes home with a broken leg, and then the bad guys find her, and she goes home alone on <laughs> Which is totally illegal, by the way. Don't do this. <laughs> Don't do this at home. But yeah, it's, it's lots of fun. I'm right at the middle, and they think they got rid of the bad guys. Oh, bless their hearts. <laughs> So it all just like ramps up from here and it's been pretty fast paced. It's been pretty fun to write, but it all just like goes crazy from here. And I keep forgetting that, that they want romantic suspense and I'm like not really romancing it because it's, it, it, it's not natural yet. So, you know, I tend to just do what's ever natural. I don't, I don't force it. So we'll see where this supposed romance is supposed to be. And here it goes. You know, sometimes it fits in a book and I'm happy to write it. And other times it's not that it doesn't fit in this one, but I'm also of the opinion that when you're in fear for your life, you're not falling in love. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. So <laughs> anyway, I will see you when I start doing this other stuff. But in the meantime, I, I'm going to say what I say on my podcast. Have a good day. Go read a good book. <sighs> see you on Thursday.